Hello everybody! Another tutorial I've been wanting to do is a full body tutorial. I actually wasn't planning on doing it for a while yet, but I was sketching a new OC of mine, Alu, and I decided I'd just record the process and use it for the tutorial. Now, keep in mind this isn't a complete full body tutorial. It's more like a mini tutorial. A serious full body tutorial would take more planning than my brain can handle right now, so take this in the meantime. Also, if you do want to find a really good full body tutorial, Bio has already just did one over on her channel and it's really good, so go check that out too. Without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. So as y'all can see, I begin every one of my drawings with two circles that I use for the head, and then I will sketch the lines around that. And I know that lots of people will use circles also for like the chest and the rear part of the dragon. Um, I've never really done that. I don't like it much because it, I just, I don't like to set down where the body is until I've drawn the neck. And it's just, it's just something that I don't really do. Um, so I'll take the neck down and then I will usually draw the spine up until about where the tail begins. And, um, actually I didn't manage to record all of it, so you didn't see me draw the front legs or some of the back legs. I am sorry about that. Um, also, you do see me you do see me use the transform tools quite a bit. Uh, transform tools are not cheating. Some people in digital art seem to be under the misguided conception that uh, transform tools are cheating, and they're really not. They are awesome. They're the best. Transform tools make life so easy. Um, so I I didn't really have the legs moving around that much in this pose. In some poses, including uh, this dragon's ref sheet, um, I'll have the legs moving around, but I really didn't want to do that. I just wanted to show y'all kind of a standard full body that I might draw. Um, you'll see me messing around with the sketch a little bit here. I'm just kind of cleaning it up and getting my features down all the way. And then I come in and draw the tail, which I, I usually do save the tail for last, and the wings too. I want the legs and the, the, the torso and the neck and the head, which is kind of the main part. I know the tail is really important too, but it, it just it doesn't seem like a main part to me. Anyways, um, cleaning up my sketch a little bit more here, finagling with the shape of the head, which is really important. Like, I mean, shapes when you're drawing characters are so important, but if there's one thing you don't want to mess up, y'all, it's the head shape, because that will make or break a drawing as recognizable. Especially since most of the time you're not even drawing a full body, you're drawing a half body or something. So, um, I'm moving on and drawing the wings here, and as you guys have probably learned by now, I am really, really easy going when I draw wings. I oftentimes won't draw the limbs in the wings or even those fingers in the wings. I'll just kind of draw lines or whatever. So um, now we're moving on to the details in the dragons. That means the horns, the underbelly, the ears, the ruff, since it's a rain wing, and the feathers on this dragon's design. And I will be talking about the design in a minute while I color it. So I've got the horns drawn in and I'm working on the ears. The ears are actually really big and that's because this design was originally for a cat that I wings of fire dragonized. And again, I'll be talking about that in a minute. So um, just, you know, sketching your details. They don't have to be perfect. So seriously, don't worry about making them perfect, especially since this is a sketch. I cannot tell you how many artists worry about making their sketches perfect and that like they burn out before they can even get to the rest of the drawing. So please respect your <laughs> mental stability and don't stress about making it perfect. I will, I'll tell you an exercise at the end of this video that will help you um, learn to sketch quickly and details really should come after you've got the proportions in. I cannot tell you how many times I have drawn something and then like done the details. Like say I draw the head and the neck and then I do the details before I've gotten the rest of the proportions right only to find I've got to erase the neck. Now we all ate that. So um, you can tell here that I'm just kind of adding in the details uh, wherever they need to go. So the underbelly, the scales. Um, I didn't do the full rain wing scales I haven't released my video on how to simplify the rainwing design yet. That is coming, so don't worry. But um, I didn't do. I did. I did follow that here. While I color the first full body, I want to talk about the OC a little bit. Alu is actually my second OC after Cypress. She was designed by me for a friend of mine, Artemisa, who's on Scratch. Actually, the design is for a cat, but I loved her so much I had to turn her into a Wings of Fire dragon too. No, it had nothing to do with me not wanting to draw cats. Shush. 
Anyways, I'll link her scratch page in the description. Her design is so relaxing to draw though. I mean, look at the colors! Also, I'm sure you've noticed the feathers coming from her back and tail. Yes, she is a rain wing. Yes, the feathers are attached to her. No, I do not take criticism. For real though, I really don't care about the rules for Wings of ROCs, if in fact there are any, which I don't think there are. I think the feathers look cool, so they exist. Also, since I love her colors and design so much, I think she can't really change her scales much. The only thing that move are her leopard spots, and those don't move on command. Full disclosure, this is only so I don't have to worry about drawing her spots in the same way every time. It's literally just so that I can be lazier. <laughs> But it's also part of, um, like what I was talking about in that last video I did, or the last tutorial I did, the Making Drawing Dragons Easier video, where you just want the design to be as easy as possible, and trust me, having 30 plus spots on just her body alone, not even counting her wings, that don't move, that you have to figure out how to draw the same way every time, is like, it's not feasible at all. So once again on the second pose, I began with circles to show the position of the head. Since this is a front facing pose, you do see that the circles overlap a little bit. It takes a little bit of time to get used to the circles um, kind of showing where the head is, but you'll get used to it pretty quick. So I traced around the circles and kind of added my lines. I spent a little bit more time here roughing out the details to like the jawline and the horns because this pose is a little bit newer for me. I only taught it to myself, um, like I didn't, you know, I only really learned it recently. So I, I'm still learning the ropes to it. Like I could probably draw a side profile for a dragon in my sleep. So uh, not much left to learn there as far as like the kind of stereotypical side profile goes. But this one I am definitely still learning. So you can see that I kind of took the shoulders out here and then uh, had the underbelly curving a little bit. Um, I did have to come back several times and work with the width of the shoulders and the size of the legs and torso in general because it wasn't working right. But once again, there's those fabulous transform tools that make me so happy. So it makes it really easy for me to do that. Um, and then you have, you will have the back legs kind of coming out to the side like that. Um, it's a pose I've seen many people draw with cats with their back legs, so that's definitely a good way to do it. Honestly, cats and dragons have very similar physical, uh, what's the word? It's, it's just completely flown my brain. And uh, this is, uh, some parts of this video are unscripted. But yes, cats and dragons have similar bodies. I'll just go with that. So you can tell I'm bringing out the wings here again, like, Seriously, no detail with the wings. I didn't even draw the limbs. I just had some of the folds in the membrane and that was it. Um, so, uh, so another thing that you wanna remember is with these front view poses, they are very symmetrical. So it's great to have the tail poking out on one side or the other to kind of throw off that symmetricalness of it. Because I mean like in nature, nothing is perfectly symmetrical, pretty much nothing. So um, the tail having 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 the tail on one side will help it seem a little bit easier on your eyes, and I mean lots of tails have cool stuff on the end, so it's great to have those poking out too. Um, now I am working with the underbelly, and you want to be sure not to have the underbelly reaching to both sides of the neck because that would be too wide for the underbelly. Remember to have a little bit more of the neck poking in on each side, and the underbelly um, just kind of curves around to that curve we put here at the bottom, and at the front of your forelimbs, you can add in any scales that would go along the side of your forelimbs. <laughs> I'm not doing a great job explaining this. I hope y'all are learning something. Um, I headed up to the head here, no, no pun intended, and drew in the ruff and the ears, uh, which I do have stick out to the side when I'm drawing poses like this. Honestly, it looks the best with ring wings because you can have the ruff sticking out to the side and it's really cool looking. Ruffs are so great for showing emotion. So now I've come to the face and I'm kind of working in some details. I did have to redraw my eyes because they were weird looking. And also I had to work a little bit with the sort of pointy tip to her nose. I know that most rain wings, um, like usually the canon ref is that they would have a horn at the tip of their nose, which I barely ever actually draw. I, I will, I do it with night wings a lot and I don't think they have a horn like that. So as y'all can tell, I am really just making it up as I go. I. Don't always listen to the tribal reps. 
Also, I had to make her eyes a little bit bigger here because they were a tiny bit too small. And that's about it for the full body sketches. Um, I can't think of any other information to impart. So uh, let's close out the video with the coloring of this second sketch. So I tried to pick two poses that people do a lot for this tutorial. Obviously the side one is pretty standard for rep sheets and stuff, and the second one is also very common. And I love how the second pose turned out by the way. Another bit of random knowledge, the sketching parts of this tutorial are sped up 4 times and the coloring bits are sped up 11 times. I thought this would be helpful information so that nobody thinks I did this super fast. It actually took me about 45 minutes for each drawing all told. That means about an hour and a half total. And I would recommend sketching some full bodies to y'all. Set a timer for 2 minutes and try to get a whole body down. Make it small, only about 2 inches tall or something. The smaller a drawing is, the less tempted you'll be to add in all kinds of details. Learning the shapes involved is really important. I used to really hate it when my art teacher would make me do time drawings, but the timer is just there to keep you from worrying about perfection. The point of this exercise is to learn the shapes to a full body, not create a perfect drawing. And that about wraps up this tutorial. I hope you guys found it helpful. I will continue figuring out how to put together a serious full body tutorial for you alongside my other projects. Also, I refuse to commit to anything, but I think the next tutorial I create will be a wings tutorial with everything from sketching to shading. Hopefully, no promises. Anyways, be sure to check out the links in the description because they lead to my DeviantArt, Revelable Store, and Artemisia's scratch page. Feel free to comment telling me how your two minute practices went too. I'd love to hear about it, and I try to read all the comments and answer questions and stuff. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see everyone next week.